Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Jet Engine tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a dynamic menu that's easy to update like this. We recently had a client request from a brewery that wanted an easy way to update their tap list daily. So I figured instead of having them to update the page inside of a page builder like Elementor every time they want to make an update to this tap list, I wanted to have it where they could just go into their WordPress dashboard like this. And let me show you how easy it is to enable this right here. So I wanna be able to, let's just say, turn off Bud Light on tap. So I'm gonna make it as easy as the client can just go ahead, do a quick edit, hit save, and then when you refresh this on the live website, you're gonna see that Bud Light is now gone. So I wanted to make it that easy so they can go in every day and just be able to quickly go in and turn on and off all of this without having to deal with page builders and all of that. So now I'm going to show you how I set everything up on the back end, and then this is going to work across any type of website, you know, that you need to be able to turn on and off. So menus or anything along those lines, but this is a good use case for a brewery. If you have an on tap list, this could work great for your website. So here we are on the back end of the website, and let me show you how I have everything structured and set up, and then you could just copy this to your existing website. So the first thing we need to do is head over into Jet Engine, and then what I'm going to do is create a custom post type. So I already have this one right here called beers. So let me open this up and then let me show you all my settings and then you can kind of just copy it. So the first thing you can see right here, I just have the word beers as the post type name. And then the slug is just gonna be called beers. Um, I do recommend turning this off if you don't need to show this on the back end. So this is the uh, hide meta field. So I usually enable that on. Uh, everything underneath label, you could just keep by default. So as you can see, I don't have anything changed right here. Underneath advanced settings, I pretty much kept everything default. I did turn off this one right here where uh, the URLs for each one of your posts aren't gonna be public. So in this situation, you're not gonna have like a page for Miller Lite and Smithix and Stella. You're not gonna have all of those pages. So you can turn that off if you don't need to have individual pages for each one of your posts. Then I just pretty much kept everything else right here by default. Uh, the rewrite slug is just beers. The post type, you, know, you just keep it at post. And then if you do need to add uh, taxonomies or any sort of categories to this, uh, you can enable this option right here. Then down here, um, I did have it where it's only gonna be the title. So usually by default, the editor's on here, so you can remove that, because it's probably best to just have your descriptions or your editor all inside of a meta field, it makes it a lot easier to target. And then right down here, we have three meta fields. We have a photo, the description, and then whether it's on tap or not. So let me show you how this looks on the back end once you have it all set up. So as you can see, when you go to beers and here we are underneath Bud Light, I wanted to have it where they could just add a photo, a little simple description right here, and then it needs to be on tap or not on tap. So yes or no. And I do recommend just making these all required. So then that way it's always gonna look good on the front end. So that's what these three meta fields are right here. So if I open up the very first one, you can see I just have one called beer photo. Here's the slug and pretty standard. I just have it as the field type is media and then I'm returning the media URL. So then when we display, it's just gonna show the URL of that image. And then, like I said, I made it required right here. And then underneath description, um, I just have a label right here called description. Here's the ID called beer description and then keep this by field. And then you could do the um, WYSIWYG editor or in this situation is have one called text area. So that way they can't really like format the text or anything like that. So depending on your use case, you could have it where they could you know choose bold text or anything like that with this WYSIWYG. And then same thing, I made it required. And then right down here, this is probably gonna be the most important part of this whole entire tutorial is you need to be able to have it where they can toggle on with a radio button, yes or no. So I'm just calling this label on tap. Here's the uh, name right here of the field. And then radio is going to be a yes or a no. So they need to choose yes or a no. So right down here is where you're going to add, where it says new field options. This is where you're going to add a yes and no value. So you can see right here I have a yes for the label and the value. And then right here, a no and a no. And then... Inside of this section, I'm still inside of the on tap radio. There's this option right here when you use a radio function is uh, make sure it's required. You could do right here where it says quick edit support. So what that is, is 
gonna give the user the ability to just click right here, quick edit. So they don't have to go to each post. They could just go right here into quick edit and just click yes. So it literally would just take them like two seconds to update it because they need to be able to update it every day. So make it really easy for them. And that's how you set up the different meta fields. So now let me move down into the admin column section. So this is really cool. If you notice right here, I have a new tab right here called on tap. So inside of that setting right here called admin columns, you can give the user the ability to sort by if it's on tap or not, and then have it all display right here. So it's going to be a really quick visual way for them to see if their beers are on tap or not. And then if for some reason, uh, once you have that set up, it doesn't show, you, need, you may need to click where it says screen options and then just make sure it says on tap right here. So let me go into that and show you how easy that is to set up. So once you're inside the admin columns, just go ahead and click add new and give it a name. So whatever you name this uh, title right here, that's what's gonna be right where my mouse is. So that's the label. And then you need to just make sure you select meta value and then on tap, this is the field name. So let me scroll back up here and show you where to get the field name if you don't know. So right here is the on tap radio button. And then this right here is your meta value right here called on tap. So that's gonna be what you need to copy and paste right here. And then you could click this button is sortable. And that's it, you just go ahead, hit update. And now the user is gonna have the ability to sort once they have, you know, once you have some beers in here or whatever it may be, you're gonna be able to now sort it. So after you set up the custom post type, what you need to do is just go ahead and make sure that you have some values up in here. So as you can see, I just have, what is it? Six different beers right here. Just went into each one updated the uh, the photo, add a little description, and it's a yes or a no. So this is how it's gonna look for the user. So whenever they add or edit any of these uh, beers or whatever it may be, this is how easy the interface is gonna be. So there's gonna be no page builder or anything like that that they have to deal with. So now we're gonna create the listing for this grid. So inside of Jet Engine, they give you an option to make it where it's really easy to pull in meta fields like this and display it you know, in a grid and everything. So what we need to do is now go underneath Jet Engine and Listings. So as you can see, I have this one called Beer Listings. So the way I set it up was just click Add New. You're gonna go ahead and just choose Post and make sure that you choose your custom post type right here. So right where it says From Post Type, make sure it says Beers, just give it a name, and then I'm gonna edit this in Elementor. Now I'm gonna jump into mine and show you how I have everything set up. And here we are inside of my listing. And as you can see, it's just a really simple two column uh, layout right here. So on the left side, I just have the uh, logo. I have the title of the beer and then the little description. So I'm just gonna quickly go through how I was able to pull in everything. So I'm pulling in uh, widgets from Jet Engine. So as you can see here on the right side, I'm using a dynamic image. And then these two on the right are just dynamic field widgets. So if you just go into your widgets right here and just type in the word dynamic, these are all gonna be Jet Engine widgets. So I just clicked and dragged in the dynamic image widget. And all you have to do is just go ahead and choose your source. So it was beers and photo. So it knows that that is a photo meta field. And so it's just gonna pull that in. And then all of these settings right here are pretty standard like Elementor stuff. So you can change the width and all of that right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep that like that. Then on the right side, I'm just gonna pull in the dynamic field. And you can see right here, you just click post term object data right here. And then you could just choose title. So that's just gonna be the title of each one of these beers is just gonna be inside the listing grid. And then same thing down here, what we need to do is pull in another dynamic field widget. And this case, what we need to do is choose metadata and then it's gonna show the three different things that you have for your metadata inside your custom post type. So in this situation, I'm just gonna call it description. And when you do that, it might look like this if you're using a text area instead of the WYSIWYG. And so if you wanna have it where there's like a line break, so what you could do is go underneath filter field output and click this one right here, it says add paragraph tags. And after you have all your dynamic information set up, now you can you know, change the way that the design's gonna look. So in this situation, I just went to the main container, just changed the background color, just so it kind of stands out a little bit more. So in between each one, I have little gaps. And so you can kind of, for the user, it's gonna be a little bit easier to see you know, all the different things on the menu. Now I'm gonna show you how you set up the query so you can only pull in the beers that are on tap. 
So you just need to head over into Jet Engine underneath your Query Builder. Just go ahead and click Add New. So let me click the one I have and show you how I have all my settings. So I just called this one Current Beer List. And then the query type is just going to be Post Queries. Then down here, what you can do is for your custom post type, just make sure you go ahead and choose the one that you created. So in this one, it's just called Beers. And we'll stay inside of here. And what we want to do is order it by uh, alphabetical. So what you could do is just click add new sorting parameter, click by title underneath where it says order by, and then this is where you can choose from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. So in order to do alphabetical, you just choose lowest to highest. Then what we need to do is just jump over into your meta query right here and click add new. And what we need to do is just pull in the one called on tap. So again, if you don't know what your field name is, just go back into your custom post type, go into the one on tap, and this is right here. He's gonna make sure whatever is inside of here is gonna match up to the query builder. So just go ahead and copy that, and you could just paste it in right here. So your field name is on tap, and then what we need to do is make sure underneath compare, it's equal, and then the value is yes. So when the user selects yes, that's gonna be the value that sticks to the one on tap. Then you can just keep this at character, and that's it. So what I like about the query builder is you see this button up here where it says preview results. You can go ahead and enable that on, and then this is gonna show you how many beers are on tap, five. And so if I go down here, for example, and change this to no, you're gonna see this is gonna to change to one. So as you can see right here, when you choose a different value, that's going to update these numbers. So this is a really good uh, preview. So instead of having to like do it on the front end or anything like that, they give you the results right here. So now you can just go ahead, hit update. Now we can finally go to the page, add this to the website, and then do some testing. And here we are on my demo page. And what you need to do is just pull in the listing grid widget. So as you can see, when you pull in the listing grid widget, it's going to ask you for the listing. So just go ahead and whatever you just created, uh, the name is just called beer listing in my situation. So whatever you called it on your listing, just go ahead and start typing and it should populate. And in this situation, I'm just gonna have it as uh, one column because the way I designed it is just more like horizontal. So when you do that, you're gonna notice that you need to do one other step and that is underneath your custom query, just go ahead and click that on. And the one we just created, it's gonna show up in this list. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure you select that. Because if you don't have this custom query, it's just gonna pull in all of them. So go ahead, hit update. And now on the front end, what I like to do is of course do some testing. So everything is now in alphabetical order. But let's go ahead and let's say we wanna remove Harp, Miller Lite, but add Bud Light. So let's see how easy that's gonna be and make sure everything still works. So if you go to beers, let's make it where Bud Light is on tap. Let's get Harp out of here and Miller Light out of here. So just the quick edit, hit update, and that's it. Now you can just go to the front end of the website, hit update, and now we have Bud Light, and it goes to Smithix, Stella, and Yingling. So that's it for this Jet Engine tutorial on how to create a dynamic menu that's easy to update. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.